my most nervous repot in a very, very long time. It is time though for my Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. I am super apprehensive. I'll get into all of that, but doing it together with you helps me keep the nerves down. So stick around, help me stay focused, please. This epidendrum was bought as an homage to my dad who had Parkinson's. Normally, I repot my self-watering pots every two years, maximum three years. This one has been in its pot for five years. That is how apprehensive I have been about repotting this orchid. Oh, I can't tell you how annoyed I am with myself, but yeah, the pot is rock hard which is a good thing that means there's lots of roots but also look at the structure of this orchid it is just so easy to break it i can't be radical with her like i would a cat leah try to wedge her out of the pot we're gonna do the hammer just to get a start which of course is going to be bashing roots in the pot i'm gonna try i'm really gonna try and keep all my structures intact not have them snap and all that that's why while i want a video to be informative you know no dead air as best as possible i i also have to just on this one focus on the orchid and hope that you enjoy the video like <laughs> the video subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet Oh, it would all help so very, very much. And she's moving a little bit. So, my dad had Parkinson's. And yeah, this orchid is Parkinsonianum, Parkinsoniana, Coilostylus, Epidendrum. It's always a back and forth. The reason I kept telling myself I can put it off, I can put the repot off on this orchid is because... She has very fine roots. So filling the air gaps in between the pot will take much, much longer. Another reason I kept putting it off is because every time she grows new roots is when she's in bloom. And then you can imagine with all this dangly stuff going on, <laughs> Beautiful huge blooms on top of that. Not the fact I wouldn't repot if an orchid is in bloom if it's necessary. It's just she is awkward. And then add blooms to that. So then you say, okay, when the blooming finished, the roots will still grow. Yes. However, the bloom duration on this orchid is three months. <laughs> and by that time, it's like, yeah, okay. Now we're heading closer to fall. Don't want to disturb the orchid. Let her grow a little bit of strength, you know? Oh, so I'm jumping the gun. I had some new root growth during the winter. I can see some fresh root tips in the pot. They stay nice pink. I see a little bit of death, but that's to be expected. <laughs> see, I don't even want to turn the pot too much. And another thing that also happens in my climate being so dry, all the tips of the beautiful needle-like growths, they die back if I bash them. But it's, it has to be done, see or see. And I can do this today. I figured it's windy enough. I don't have to put the umbrella up because we've got a good breeze going and her leaves are very Tourette, as you can see. So the exposure to the sun that she has not been accustomed to during the winter is pretty minimal because her structures are so thin. On top of that, I have a little growth up here. It's a branching one from the top. It's not very well attached, but it's alive and it's trying to grow and I would like to encourage it to grow. I don't want to break it off. See, I've got nowhere to pull this orchid up and out. I've got everything prepared for her once she comes out of the pot. It's like, if I can just up pot her, I'd, I'd be happy, you know? <laughs> I don't think any roots are attached. 
It all looks like it's moving. This orchid would love to be mounted. But she has to come indoors in my climate for the winter. She has two allocated spaces and they work well. I'm not sure she's gonna bloom this year, but I did say that last year as well. This was a measly attempt at getting a growth to grow in one direction. Oh, okay, so the pot is breaking. Well, at least there's that. If I can't save the pot, I might just cut into it, but it's loosening up. Uh. <laughs> oh, here she comes, I think. Please come out. So I just had to take a break. <laughs> but I took a picture. You can now see the inside of the pot. While I said I could cut into the pot, I'm not going to because I don't know which roots I'd be cutting through. So just patience. Just keep going. If I need to take another break, I'm going to take another break. At least I won't risk breaking the orchid. Oh, she's coming out. Now all I have is the microfiber. Oh my goodness. Oh, you guys. <laughs> we got it. Can I lay her down with this growth right here? There we go. Let's get in a little bit closer. All right. We still had plenty of air gaps in between. I can see that it's well rooted in. I mean, five years of root growth. All the brown roots right here, these are all dead. You can see some nice pink ones. Those are the live roots. Now I did say I just want to up pot her, but I'm feeling brave now. I want to see how much I can get of the dead root system out. Even if I attack only one side. If I can't turn this orchid around because of her structures, I'm fine with that. And she's going up into two times her original pot size. So I am establishing a ration back into the pot by using a new pot, but still, there's too much to clean up here that I just feel comfortable just plonking her back in. I mean, five years after all is a long time. You know, we might as well, now that I'm feeling braver, do a little bit more to hopefully establish her for another five years. If not more, because as I said, that pot size is gonna be, let's say oversized for this orchid, but it's gonna at least give me some peace of mind <laughs> and I don't have to do this again until another five years have passed as a bare minimum. But I'm happy to say she did well. I'm also happy to say that my calculated guess of leaving her in the pot that long, that proved to be true as well because some orchids have such vigorous roots that they would have filled a pot in two or three years under the same circumstances. So the five years of root growth here, that's awesome. It's good to know that sometimes intuition is really, really working and still up to speed. <laughs> I'm not concerned about the amount of dead roots I have. In case you're wondering, I'm very happy that, you know, it is a normal cycle for a root system too die off but I do want to be careful with the live roots that are attached to the microfiber so if you can't see much forgive me but I'm just trying to separate a live root from the microfiber because it grew through the little fiber strands and I'm just taking my snips underneath the root in between the strands and going along the root structure just to see if I can't save that if it gets damaged well 
That is collateral damage. That's what happens during repots. This was not the plan for my filming today. But you know what? I have I felt I felt courageous. So we got the live root and all these are dead. Okay. I, yeah, I felt courageous today. Don't know where that came from, but I thought follow that instinct. If we follow our instincts, sometimes we come out on top. It's also helpful to have a breezy day. So any perspiration that would drip into my eyes, <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> See, guys, I have nobody here to wipe the brow. Always keep the roots damp. I've tried several camera angles before I sat down. This is the best one for the position of the orchid. I can't bring you in over this side because my hand would be in the way. But I'm just digging through the center now, loosening up more to get up more bits of dead root. See the difference now with the live root out here, nicely exposed? Circle with dead roots. Now you can wonder why I'm not being as radical with her on the root system cleanup, etc., as I am when you see me otherwise just taking off a third, creating more space for oxygen exchange, gas exchange, etc. Well, she is not in active root growth. That is the difference. I'm repotting this orchid while she is not in active root growth. This would be her phase of preparing to bloom. So I'm not as radical with anything compared to when I repot while an orchid has active roots growing. There is no plan B until a couple of months down the line, if you know what I mean. But if I don't do this now, trust me, if she does bloom, I'm just going to be like, oh no. You know, I want to enjoy the blooms instead of like last year. This was actually supposed to happen in 2022. We're now in 2023. You can see how long I've been holding off. And last year, while I enjoyed the blooms, I was also cross with myself for not having gotten in. So if she does bloom for us this year, then it's going to be like, oh, thank you and enjoy it, you know. I'm happy to say that it is a beautifully branching root system. And seeing as she has not ever objected to the self-watering setup. Oh, love this orchid even more, so make sure that she stays safe. When I say that she would prefer to be mounted, well, the preference is according to the environment. Her structure, her growth habit is really, really conducive to mounting. But I don't have an indoor grow space that can hold a mount like this one. And I have other plans for other orchids that are going to go on mounts, organic mounts, and those mounts are going to be huge. So I'm already playing the Tetris game in my mind as to where is what going to go during the winter. And while this one has done so well in the pot, the other ones are already mounted. They are brassavolas, and I am not going to put those in a pot because brassavola roots in Lekka and self-watering, mm, I haven't figured that out. In five years of growing in this setup, I have not figured that out. And I don't want to risk the orchids. But as their size increases, the inorganic mounts don't appear to be holding up. So everything has a season. And that is what I wanted actually to do today. But, because we're dealing with fine roots on brassavolas as well, 
but my drill isn't working. Batteries are charged, everything's ready to go. And Niun Mu, nothing. It's not firing up, so thank goodness I have a house guest who's super helpful and he's gonna go figure it out for me. He's out and about and we'll figure something out. And then I just thought, Parkinsonianum, go for it. So we're gonna make it happen. It's going super well so far. While it's not hot today, the breeze with the sun dries everything out. So I'm very mindful of these roots not drying out at all. They don't know dry. And I'm actually via this position getting through to the other side. <laughs> I've already done more than I was thinking I was gonna do. But like I said, now I'm feeling courageous even though I can't turn the orchid around. Or can I? We'll see. I would like to maintain that little moss pillow up there. Super helpful for an orchid like this. Has a great little microclimate of humidity. And that moss came all by itself. I didn't do anything. So it can stay. I'm also glad that the Lekka is actually coming off relatively easy, even from roots that are alive, because some orchid roots, oh, when they're alive, they hug the Lekka and they stick to it. It's all coming off relatively easy. So I'm not doing a lot of damage on the velamen of the existing viable roots. That's great. Just not get ahead of ourselves here. This is what I've done so far. That's pretty good oration. We can work with that. I'm feeling bold though. And it's at this time that anybody, I always recommend stop. If you're happy with what you wanted to achieve and then I've gone above and beyond what I thought I was going to do, I'm, I should be super happy now. Just let it go, potter up. That is always the point where I recommend people stop because after what can happen, accidents, something breaking off, you know, we get cross with ourselves. Why didn't I just let it go? Why didn't I just stop while I was ahead, you know? I'm not heeding my own advice. My mind is telling me to keep going. I'm hearing my own words. I'm not paying much attention. Look at that. We can work with this. We can do this. the other side. Oh, I can't believe myself. Let me reiterate what I just said before. If you feel like you've done more than you actually were hoping for, stop. Okay? Because now, if something goes wrong, I'm going to be so, so mad. I'm going to do a little bit of a plug. I might as well. I just mentioned organic mounts. The Orchid Ninja side of my YouTube channel has a beautiful video, at least I think it's beautiful, of my trip to the Parque Los Alcornocales that I featured in a live stream. So that is some exclusive footage in the background that is being uploaded. I have part one up at the moment. So become an Orchid Ninja for that kind of footage, excursions, trips, etc. Even not Orchid related, so I'll, get, I'll admit that, not always orchid related but sights sounds surroundings where I'm at what I'm doing and where it's feasible and acceptable for me to film orchid ninjas are with me on the ride so hit the join button because it's actually fun taking you guys along talking to you and showing you stuff would be awesome if you would be able to support the channel that way as well. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. And thank you very much in advance. Haha. -ha.
<laughs> the root that's been bugging me for years because I could see it was dried out, but you never know if a dry root on the surface is actually functioning in the pot and this one wasn't. <laughs> can't believe I'm doing this, you guys. I can't believe, let's make, let me qualify that. I can't believe that I'm still doing this, but my heart rate has slowed down. So <laughs> I think that's a good thing. That helps a lot. Some roots are thicker than others, but they're still dead. Now that she's lighter, I'm okay to hold her by the structures at the top. Dead roots carry a lot of water weight. Now, it would be nice to have somebody else on the patio to hold the orchid up. <laughs> I'm ambitious. I'm ambitious. Fingers crossed. This is the end of the rhizome from her, from early days. It's still green. We're not going to touch that, not going to cut that off. Still green. Wonderful. Whew. Breathe, Nina. Okay, we've got a little bit of mold issue in the right in here so just as well we went in didn't seem to hurt the orchid there's a little bit of white speckling going on there we're right at the base I can't believe it see my snips are coming out the other end. I have to remind myself to breathe. Okay, now she's obviously all the weight is gone. And she's moving towards me now. So take that as a note to self. I don't want to have her slipping off the table and crash landing on the floor. I just want to show you, I hope this shows on camera. There is the mold in there. Just as well we got in there. I'm not anticipating any long-term issues because I have no idea how long it's been in there. But you can see good roots all around it. So we will go in with hydrogen peroxide just for that little area or check if we remove the moss, if that makes any difference. We did it, you see? Here's the older rhizome, still intact, still green. And this is where we potted her up. These were her first roots right in here. Oh my goodness, I can't believe we did this. I told you at the beginning that you need to keep me focused and you did. Thank you so, so much. I have her leaning up against my upper thigh now as well. <laughs> All body parts are now involved in the repot. Oh, boom. Just as I thought we were gonna come out winning. Dang, okay. Stop. <laughs> this is much better than expected. And I'm happy. Now we stop. I'll forgive myself that one mistake. We still haven't potted her up yet though, but I already prepared the pot and I have a plan and I think it's gonna work out just fine. Ooh, let me get resituated and let's get her potted up before and after. Wow. <laughs> Just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide down the center. I'm not spraying the whole root ball. Just to keep a record of it, because this may kill the moss. But we've got plenty of moss. It'll grow back. Oh, isn't this beautiful? Love, love, love. There's my pot. And you can see I've got the microfibers in place, but I've already put a wire structure support into it. It's tied from the bottom. 
So we are good to go because yes, she is going to be wired in somewhat, seeing as she is very top heavy because of how she just spills over the pot. And what I've got now is the main component will be small lecker, but I'm going to crock this pot with large lecker just to save on my resources. I've got lots and lots of large lecker and these bigger pots are using up the media like gobble, gobble, gobble. So we've got that. She was in a 15 centimeter pot. We're putting her into a 21 centimeter pot. Now I have to keep an eye on the orchid, how she behaves with her structures and the tripod. I don't want her so close to the edge, but there's one structure, of course, that has just been pendant all this time. And it's like, I want to be pendant again. And I'm like, yeah, well, long-term, that's not such a good idea. Still got my little new growth thing here. Let's get the wires situated. Woo, and one growth in the water. We don't want that. There we go. This main lead has to pay attention just a little bit to what I need it to do. So I'm weaving around any roots that are up and down and around. Don't want to jeopardize those. I have her in position. I like where she's at at the moment. So this is where I'm going to do my little twist off. I have a lot of moss in the water where in future there will be lecker, so that has to come off. Now that those roots will be in a wet environment, that moss can come off. But I'm going to save some for the top, because I think a root up here is going to be vulnerable and exposed. I'm just going to hold her back a little bit more with the wire while I fill in with small lecker. Let's see where we're at. Now that we've dispersed all the lecker throughout the root ball, let's see where we're at. I could fill around with lecker right here, but we're going to go back to the moss. Don't want this orchid to be too dry on the surface now that the surface area has also increased. Yes, there should be more humidity for the orchid to deal with and get her roots into the pot, that is not always guaranteed though. I'm not always around. It gets very, very breezy where I'm at. Meaning that new roots coming into the pot, even the old ones, can't be aggressive with misting on this orchid because of her structures. They are tiny after all. By Joe, we've done it. We've done it. We've done it, we've done it by Joe, we've done it. Epidendrum Parkinsoniana is safe. Yes, not a fist pump of victory. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for sticking through with me. I've got goosebumps. I'm so happy. Oh, you know what? I'm also a little bit exhausted. The adrenaline has left my body. There she is. There she stays. Up into the corner of the blooming alley is her location. I have some shuffling to do because clearly 15 centimeters had a nice snug little corner and three pots fit around. Now we have a nice snug little corner and probably no more pots fit around. Something I have to work with, but oh my goodness. The growth of the winter is this one right here. It's still intact. Didn't bash it. There's another growth right here. Didn't bash that. There's another growth back here. 
have to keep looking if you could see it back here. Didn't bash that from what I can tell. And of course, the growth that was on this one right here, it's around the corner. I'm always putting it through the grating. Didn't bash that. And our little attached piece right here, it's still attached. Oh my goodness, you guys. If you watched it to the end, a massive, massive thank you so, so much. My Epidendrum Parkinsonianum. Whew, I can breathe a little bit easy now. And should she decide to bloom for us, that is a bonus. Right now, I'm just grateful that nothing happened to this orchid and we got a complete root ball cleanup. I honestly, my mind is blown because I don't go into any risky business that much when it comes to something like this, how much the orchid means to me. So thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Thank you for helping me stay focused. Thank you for your support. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.